Hey, I'm Master Jiso, and welcome to the Sifu Academy. If you're here today, it's probably because Grandma Jigfang, she hit you pretty hard on your head, and you want to know how to beat her without dying. Not too much. So, the first thing about Grandma Jigfang is that you don't want to try to predict what she's going to do, otherwise she will punish you and she hits pretty hard. And the second thing is you want to be very comfortable with your parries. If you're not comfortable with your parries, you're going to get caught off guard so many times you're going to die. You're going to use, we're going to be using a lot of pushback cancel in case we get pushed back because she can follow up pretty, pretty bad. She's very strong at doing that and if you get cornered, you may die. So, I chose this to, to do this on her stage because she doesn't behave the way she would normally behave in training as opposed to in here. And here you have a clear idea, the big picture when it comes to fighting her. So, what do you want to know about Jing Fang and how do you counter her? Well, firstly, her combos are pretty much basic. They're very basic, especially in her first phase. You want to... if Okay, if you want to close the distance, I would advise you only do so after she performs a sweep. If she doesn't perform a sweep, don't go in just yet because it can still come and it can surprise you. So only go and close the distance after she performs a sweep because normally if she performs a sweep and you are able to... You don't want to actually, you know, block, parry the sweep. You want to dodge the sweep. That way, it gives you more, even more time to close the distance if that's what you are into. But she has two, two different ways to keep you afar. She can do two very fast attacks and two very like two slow ones. We're talking about her first phase. And a word of advice: if you're fighting Jing Fang and you want to parry her, there is a safe distance. I will say I will show you actually where you can, like how far you want to be, and that distance is very good when it comes to um, being able to read, to read the distance you know because I, f I feel like in my experience the farther i am away from her the most likely i'm going to get hit so you don't want to stay too far but you don't want to stay too close because you, you want her to use her attacks you want her to to do the things she has to do in order for you to punish her and if you get comfortable with your parries then you have nothing to worry about even if you get close and you feel like oh um she's not behaving the way i thought she would then you don't have to panic and get boinked so first we're going to talk about the slow combo starter, you know, that one where she feels like she, she turns her weapon around herself, you know, like she, she spins and then he, she throws it at you. That one is very, it's very slow. And if you, if you don't feel comfortable, I'll just advise just dodging that because the timing is so slow. Sometimes you get caught off guard, mostly because you're so used to pairing something faster. So. That one, I would say just just dodge that and that's the perfect opportunity for you to close the distance. However, she normally just stops at doing that. Like she will spin once and then throw the thing straight at you the second time. And she 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 doesn't she doesn't actually follow that up most of the time. But you need to keep in mind that she can follow that you know the, those that slow mid, you know, the, those two mid, she can follow those sometimes. Not all the time. But sometimes so be on the lookout for those and that's the only thing you need to know about that one starter in her second phase there is she just she can still do that but the variation is that the first spin attack you know this the first time she spins around it's the grab attack so you need to just you cannot parry that you just have to dodge that her second combo to the one she uses to keep you away is the very fast one and that one is the one you will most likely have a harder time with because that's the one she does the most and that's also where the mix-up potential can be and that's when she, she starts doing that you don't want to stay too far you want to stay close to her that way you can see the bone coming and then the moment she goes for a sweep that that's your way in that's the way that you can you have enough time to go in and perform a directional throw or just try to hit her but because she recovers very fast i would say just try to perform a push and then you can try to you know input chasing strikes or chasing trip kick because she, she, she recovers very fast 
The two mid attacks, those very fast ones, can be followed by a boink or a sweep. But she has a tendency to go for, you know, two mid, one bonk. Two mid, one bonk, and the third time it's like two mid and one sweep. Okay, that's what she would that's what she would normally go for. But in some rare in that cases she can just go from two mid to one sweep or just perform the boink four times in a row. It happened to me once and she actually did it five times in a row. She went mid boink, mid boink, mid boink. And that's why you need to be there. You need to not try to anticipate, you need to react to what she does. And if you can have that timing right, then we, we can move on to the second part where you actually punish her. The entirety of this fight can be spent, you know, away from her. But if you so choose to get close and actually, you know, beat her ass, I would say the best thing about Jing Fang, especially in her second phase, is that she tends to go for melee more often. Because in her first phase, she tends to go, you know, she just, just to just spider woman her way around the area, which makes it very hard to punish her. But back fist and flowing claw are amazing against Jing Fang. And I'll show you why. When you successfully pin her down and she goes back up, you can perform Flowing Claw while she's standing up. She can be sometimes just a little bit da dazzled, you know, trying to recover her balance. And in that time, you can perform a first Flowing Claw followed by a regular, you know, light attack, which is going to be the, the, the claw, you know, the claw attack. And then you perform a second, you perform a second set of Flowing Claw, but this time, you just hold it and charge a back fist. Normally, when you perform the first back, the first falling claw, you're really close to her. And the second time you do it, she's most likely trying, trying to try to retaliate. And the moment, it's just like Shan. The moment you see her move, you unleash the back fist. And nine times out of ten, you're going to hit her and interrupt her. And it works best in her second phase because in her second phase, again, she tends to attack you more often as opposed to the first one where she tends to just go back. In her first phase, you want to be careful. Again, you want to approach her when you successfully dodge the sweep. Not before because she, she can be very fast and punish you. So... When you successfully get close to her, she will still do some kind of a backflip where she actually throws her so her weapon at you. When that happens, it means like it means that her second, you know, the following attack she's going to do is most likely going to be, you know, a regular attack, right? So that that one attack you can always punish it if, if you can land a back fist in time. And I would I would just say the moment you actually successfully dodge, you know, the the amazing move she does, run at her and charge the back fist the moment you get close to her. You know, the, the, moment, the moment you get in range, charge the back fist. If you do it properly, again, most of, most of the time you're going to get her and you're going to stun her, interrupt her, and that's it. That's what you want. That's you want to stop her from doing anything. And sometimes she won't even you know do that thing where she leaps into the air and goes away from you, and that way you can always punish her. If you can get your timing right, you won't even have to memorize her other other combos. Like you just be like you can go through her like both phases without without ever using focus and just using back fist and flowing claw and also chasing trip kick, of course. Always chasing trip kick. And little side note here, if you do get caught, you know, by the sweep and you go on the ground, you can stay on the ground and you will be safe, right? Sometimes you are eager to come back up and that's how she actually gets you with the second follow-up attack. But as long as you stay on the ground, she won't get you. What you want to do when you get on the ground is that you want to wait for her to, you know, to, to start attacking and then you can move. Otherwise, most of the time you can, get, you can get cut off into a next attack and then that's how you die. So, again, you are safe with Jake Fang when she sweeps you on the ground. 100% I tasted it. And yeah, she cannot get you while you are on the ground. Long story short, if you are able to get your parries on point, if you are able to, to understand when you can close the gap, and if you can successfully land those back fists, like the moment she moves, you land those back fists, trust me, you won't even have to worry about anything else she might do. 
because she won't have the time to do those things. I can successfully go through both phases, sometimes without even worrying about getting hit, because it's all about you know that sweet spot. When you get to that sweet spot, she cannot harm you. And that right there is the easy way, it's the easiest way to deal with Jing Fang. Of course, when you get close, especially in her second phase, she has new moves when you get too close to her, but nothing which can be like, it doesn't do as much damage as the boink or the sweep of her regular attack. So most of the time you can see there is like a, you know, like the speeding attack she does, which is, it's easily dodgeable, but if you feel comfortable, you can also parry those, but it's not like, you can easily, I feel like you can easily tell when she's going to go for that, especially since that move, you know, those moves are moves she used to do before, even in the Disciple or, I, f I feel even still in difficulty. So it's nothing new, and but this time, if you played, especially if you played the game before, you will get used to that timing. It's not something very, you know, it's not new, new. The one thing you really want to look at for is the boink, and then how exactly you want to close the distance, how to make the fight go, you know, not last an eternity. Use your pushback cancel when you get pushed, stay on the ground just a little bit when you get swept, and use your back fist the moment the moment she moves is again it's, it's just like shan they kind of have a slow build up and that's when you need to go for the kill if you do it successfully again the fight will be over in no time and you will be you won't you wouldn't even have to wait a year here and with that the video is officially over i hope you i hope it will give you some insight as to how to defeat grandma but please try to spare her if you can't why well, it's fine thank you guys for watching and as always try not to die and go kiss some ass bye bye